So I'll be upgrading this single gang here for a Legrand one. Hopefully you can all see good. It's pretty dark out at the moment. I've got the torch shining up at the fitting so you can all see. Sweet as. First thing, pop these old dots out. Oh yuck, it just crumbles, eh? See how old it is? They're all yellow. See that yellowing? That's the plastic deteriorating over time. When your fittings start to yellow, it's a good time to start thinking of replacing them. Next thing, we'll rip the screws out. Right, so once the screws are out, pop her off the wall. Just be aware that painters might have painted the bloody thing to the wall. Might have to get a Stanley knife or a sharp screwdriver in the corners and just cut down the edges. Sweet as. So as you can see if this one, the bloody paint is definitely painted around it. Well that wasn't so bad pulling it off. Now if you can see in there, these cores here are snapped. That's not good. That is not good at all. So be careful when you're changing these light switches. Make sure you check that all the copper is intact. And if it's not, re-terminate it every time. I have got a video up on it, so go and watch that. It's pretty, it's a pretty old video, so hopefully it demonstrates it. I might be doing an updated version at some point. Now to change one of these, obviously have the power off first. It's a good idea to go turn the main switch off before you pull the switch off the wall. So a good way to check the powers off, even though you've turned the main switch off, give it a test. Now as you can see on the back of this one, we've got our black cables twisted up and terminated in there, and our green cables the same. On this fitting here, the outside terminals are loop terminals, which means they're not actually part of the switch, they're a bit different to the new ones. So what I'll do, is I'll take the blacks and the greens out and put them in separate connectors. If you do come across cables that are green and black and have a bit of red sleeving on them, make sure you note down what switch they came out of and copy that onto the next one because it means it's a two-way switch. So watch my two-way switching video if you want to understand that sort of stuff. This one here is a simple one-way switch, it's the only light in the room. So they're pretty straightforward these ones. So as you can see, I'm throwing them into these connectors here. They'll get stuff back in the box. Bugger. Always check the box in behind. This box here I'll be ripping out and replacing and I'll be putting a new plastic one in. Which will mean I'll have to take these bloody connectors off I've just thrown on. The only reason I'm taking them off is fittings don't fit in them properly. If it's a single switch it'll fit in there alright. But if you're going any bigger I'd suggest ripping it out, throwing in a new plastic one. Oh see, you can see that cable snap there. That's what you got to look out for with these 1mm cables. That's why you should re-terminate them every time you remove a fitting. These two here are obviously the feed cables. Because I know there's only one light on the lighting circuit and that one cable goes to that one light. These two here were in the middle terminal. It's labelled C. So the two cut ones are my feeds. And the one with copper still on it, I'll remember that, is my light switch cable. So that's the cable that goes to directly to the light fitting. These two, one of them will run back to a switch, the switchboard, probably through other light switches. And then one of them will run off to another light switch to power that one. Right, to remove these old flush boxes, see these nails in the back of them? You've got to get your side cutters in there and lever them out. So push up against the stud. And just keep slowly doing that motion. Pinch and pinch, squeeze and push. And you'll get the nails out. Sweet, right. Try and get this box out of the wall. Just be careful of the wallpaper as you take them out. You don't have to take them right out, you can just shove them down and push them down the wall on the inside. So they're gone for good. And also watch when you take them out that you don't lose cable ends in the walls. Because sometimes they're a nightmare to fish back out. And also as you're pulling the box off, 
Make sure it's not nicking the edges of the cables. This here is a plastic flush box. Uh, every time I replace a switch or socket, I always put one of these plastic ones in nowadays. So to get them in the walls, pretty simple. You put them in on, on it sideways like that so you can get them inside the wall. Once they're in the wall, you rotate them and then screw two screws in the side into the stud. Make sure you keep these cable ends outside of the wall so you don't lose the flush box down inside the wall. So slip it in like that, then rotate it. Make sure you can see these wee screw holes that the screws go into and just line one up with the bottom one at the top so you can actually visibly see them. If you can't, get a wee jib saw in here and just cut a wee notch out of the jib. Bugger. I thought I had some screws on me, I have to go get some. The ones I prefer to use are these square heads. Same ones every Sparky uses. Screw them in there, doesn't take long. So next part is we check all these terminations and just make sure that the cores aren't snapping like these earths. If I try and twist them up, they'll most likely break like that. So what we want to do, cut the whole lot off, straighten them out, strip them off and re-terminate them. Pretty crucial with these one mills. Every time you play around with them, they'll tend to snap. And the other thing is, when you're stripping these off, don't kink the cable, don't put leave nicks in it. So you might want to practice on a bit of one mil first. You just pinch the insulation and press on your pliers with your thumb and you'll see that the copper's bare and there's no kinks on it. Right, and then we uh, twist all these cores together. Just make sure you guys can see what I'm throwing down. Whack the top off them. Now they're good. So the earths are good. The neutrals are fine the way they are. That single one going to the light's perfectly fine. But these the feeds here need re-terminating. Same as before. Stripping off a bit. Twist them up a bit. Make it tidy. And then you're ready to put your connectors back on there, the earths and the neutrals. Now i got to find where I put the bloody things. Write it down in the comments if you know where I put them, because I've bloody lost the bastards. Right, enough of that debacle, I found them. So these are the electrical connectors that you want to use. When you screw them down, make sure you screw them down onto the copper and not onto the insulation. Do the old pull test. But don't screw them down too tight or they'll snap through the cores. Screw it down to where it stops and then give it a wee slight crank and pull on it. Same as you would for your car wheel sort of thing. Rightio, now we're left with our feeds and our light switch cable. So our feeds here will be going into the C of the new switch. So on the back of here we've got one C two and loop. Don't worry about the two, we're not doing two way switching. The loop terminal here acts just like one of these connectors, it's completely separate from the switch itself. So our C is the common for the feeds, so these two twisted up will be going into the C and then this one going to the light will be going into the one. So I'm going to fit that off right now. Put the feeds in first, then screw them up. Give them the pull test. Next one is the one. Screw it up. Do the old pull test again. And that's fine. Rightio. We'll bend these back into the flush box so they sit right at the back. So we'll have no trouble pushing the switch in. Now we need the screws for this. Screw it back to our new flush box. Don't do it all the way up before you get the second one in, otherwise it makes it a bit of a nightmare. Looks like I might have to do a bit of touch up painting down the side. As you can see the flush box is slightly moved over. So yeah, that's going to look a bit haggard. So in this scenario what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these screws out. We're not going to use those screws because I want to centre it over this thing so I don't have to paint it. 
So what I'm going to do is line that up for the centre, get a long enough square drive screw with a sharp end on it. So that sharp end is going to punch it into the plastic here of the flush box beside the screw hole. So it's not going to be screwing into that screw hole. We're going to go just to the left of it. Right, there goes one in. Now we want to level this up with the existing one. Also line up the door frame here. You don't need to waste time getting your level out for ones like these where there's reference points nearby. Cool. Slap on the cover plate and we're done. We'll go turn the power on and make sure it works properly. Sweet, so we'll test the light works. Bloody good. Make sure you guys subscribe, because I need, I need the support, eh, if I'm to keep doing this stuff. Throw down some ideas in the comments about what you guys want me to do, and I'll upload some videos.